Joy News Prime. This is Joy News Prime, available across Europe on London-based ABN television. My name is Israel Lai. In this edition, people of Talency vote in by-election to replace their member of parliament who gave up his constituency for a paramount seat. We'll bring you the latest as results come through. Strike by state attorneys over what they describe as poor conditions of service force adjournment of several cases. Members of the public protest reintroduction of TV license fees. The state broadcaster says it will begin collecting from August 1 this year. And in business, trading commences on the Ghana Stock Exchange of Shares of Meridian Pre-University, the first educational institution to list on the stock market in West Africa. There'll be more business plus sport and international news in this 60-minute package. Do stay tuned. Counting is underway in talents in the Upper East region after an election to choose a new member of parliament. The talents seat came up for grabs when the sitting MP resigned to take up the role of a chieftain. Voting was largely incident-free until this evening when violent clashes erupted between supporters of the two major political parties, the National Democratic Congress and the New Patriotic Party. Our days leading up to the by-election were characterized by vibrant political activities as leaders of the various political parties descended on the small town to garner votes for their candidates. We're joined on the telephone line now by Joy News Upper East correspondent Albert Tori. He's been covering the election all day. Now, how did the violence start, Albert? Well, Israel, the violence uh, started as a result of um, an alleged attack on the MPP's constituency office by a group of boys uh, called the Azoka Boys. Now, the eyewitnesses that at that place, when I got there, uh, told me that they were just there when these boys came uh, in pickups and uh, started firing into the air. And according to them, the police did not do anything to stop them. And so some of the MPP youths who were also there at the time uh, decided to, you know, attack them in return. In the process, they vandalized a third vehicle that was following the two pickups um, said to have been carrying the Azoka boys. So they destroyed uh, this uh, Pajero vehicle, uh, which was later towed away. All right, but Albert, do we have any response from the police here? Has the police said anything about this uh, incident? Israel, it's been very difficult to get to the police because um, apparently because of the way uh, things have been very difficult uh, for them today, uh, it's difficult to even see uh, the leadership of the police, the authority of the police force in the constituency. And even when you see them, they, they tell you, you know, now it's not a good time to speak. So it's been very difficult to get them. Uh, so after now, we haven't got any response from the police. Uh, as to whether they have made arrests following the violence or not, or to even confirm, uh, you know, the other pockets of violence that we've had in other parts of the constituency, it's been very difficult to get them. Albert, we actually have uh, some of the uh, uh, comments from the people you've been speaking to earlier. Let's let's hear them uh, and uh, come back to you. What has been happening? You said you saw these people, they are wearing uh, green shirts. The Azoka boys. The mm. Azoka boys. We don't know how. How do you know the Azoka boys, first of all? Are, are they. From is the, they written? Yeah, from the ISS. They, they, they've written Azoka uh, boys the, on the, the shirts. The is security men. They are okay. security. Yes. From, but from sources, we learned that the Azoka boys. Okay. And we don't know why they are here. Mm. They what what exactly here. are they doing? 
that put what it here. Here. By doing what? By giving gun shots. They fired yes. warning shots. So they are holding guns? Yeah. Yes. Mm. They are holding guns there. Mm. They should drive them away from the community. Why? Yeah. Really, we already have peace from this village. Mm. And if they are still living around here, getting to six to seven, when they declare the vote, it will be a problem. Mm. We don't know either they are supporting MPP or NDC. Okay. So if any of them take the seat and they are supporting that fellow, mm. it will be a problem. They will by all fight against the other party. Okay. So they should let them leave this community and go to wherever they came from. Right, so those were some eyewitnesses Abed spoke to earlier. Now, Abed, do we have a winner yet? No, Israel, uh, I'm currently speaking to you from uh, the coalition center, uh, which is at the Tongo uh, Community Center. Uh, this is also the center where the Electoral Commission has the talented district uh, Electoral Commission office. So um, I am currently there. At the moment, they are displayed uh, a stream uh, by a projector, and they are reading out some of the results from the polling stations uh, across the constituency. Uh, we will gradually get to the total declaration, but for now, what they are doing is uh, following polling station by polo, uh, polling station and then uh, reading out the results that they have. Thank you very much, uh, Albert. Sorry, we'll be uh, coming back to you if, uh, or you do get back to us if you have any updates on the results as uh, they become available. But still, in connection with talents, the former president, John, Jerry John Rollins, is calling for the arrest and prosecution of all involved in the act of violence that have plagued the Talency constituency by election. President Rowling said news of the situation in Talency is a matter of grave concern and that the law enforcement agencies should act with dispatch to apprehend all corporates. In a statement released by the former president's office, he said the security agencies must enforce the law without fear or favor or any political bias whatsoever. Now, an indefinite strike by state attorneys today forced the adjournment of cases at the country's court. The prosecutors, mainly at the Attorney General's Department, took the decision to protest what they describe as poor conditions of service. My colleague Kwacha Frenuyama monitored events today in our reports. It's day one of the strike by state attorneys, and already the impact is being felt. Many of the courtrooms here, although have been functional, have been forced to adjourn cases involving the state. Many, a number of the lawyers I've been speaking to have been expressing their frustration. When a trial delays unduly, it impacts negatively on the accused person if ultimately they are acquitted and discharged. And you know, there, there, there are a lot of legal consequences when somebody has been prosecuted for all the wrong reasons and is acquitted and discharged. It could also lead to judgment debts. But, well, our colleagues are also lawyers. They have their concerns. They have their terms of engagement. And we believe that uh, the state should do things quickly so that these people who are already in custody will know their fate. I think that most cases will, will not go on, you know, with the state attorney's involvement in a case, it means that the case, in a way, is a high-profile case. So if the case, uh, the case is not going on because the state attorney is not in court, and the state attorney is not in court because they are on strike, then I think that uh, so many cases will suffer uh, the losses. At the Registrar General's Department, however, work is moving on smoothly. This department has some 16 attorneys whose job is to append their signatures to documents for business registration and marriage registration, for example. Some of the patrons here tell me they've not had any interruptions at all. They actually came here to submit their form to register. I so prepared actually. So I just came to submit a form and I was asked to come next week to for the certificate. Yeah. That's the only thing that I came to. Actually I filled it. I done the, the form I filled it before I came here. So when I came I I already submitted it. So you didn't have any difficulty at all? Oh not at all, I didn't have any difficulty. Maybe in the future, yes. But that's because I'm only checking the name. So it's not going to be, uh, my activity is not going to be affected by the strike action. And I want you to give me a clear idea of what exactly you came to do here today. I mean, uh, processes you went through and all that. Now, before you register a company, a partnership, a sole proprietorship or whatever, uh, you need to check out the name. 
if the, in the opinion or in the opinion of the register of companies or the registrar, the name is uh, not acceptable, you cannot register it. So you have to get a, a, a clearance that the name is okay before you can, uh, you can use it. So that's exactly what I came to do today. Clearly, the situation could worsen if the state attorneys remain on strike. Kwache Afrenyama for Joy News. Well, the Association of State Attorneys have vowed to continue their strike until government provides documentary evidence of its commitment to address their concerns. This was after a meeting between the executives of the association, government and stakeholders at the Flagstaff House today ended in deadlock. According to the president of the association, they are tired of the many unfulfilled promises made by government and are demanding documentary evidence of its commitments. Over 150 lawyers at the Attorney General's office started an indefinite strike following unsuccessful meetings to address their conditions of service. They are demanding a salary increase and a harmonization of their salaries and benefits. We are just coming from the meeting. We have power, high power delegation from finance for the first time. And we had the chief of staff, the fair wages, uh, executive secretary, etc. And for the first time, we were told by the Minister of Finance that they are going to satisfy our demand. We said we will not take any promise. So we want commitment. They have just told us that. They requested that we call off the strike. We said no, we will not call off the strike. So we have commitment. So they promised us that they will do it. Um, what we are asking for is not one. It's not only harmonization. We have other issues. For instance, we are not on pension pension scheme. It is a very serious issue. It's a criminal offense under the laws of Ghana. Another serious issue is that we have not been paid for a long time our leave allowance, full allowance, growing. Exactly how many month arrears are we talking about? Now beginning with fuel allowance, we're talking about six months. This full allowance is supposed to help us perform our duties. Even those who do not go to court run other errands. This allowance is outstanding for six months. And we have to pay for fuel from our pocket. We also have to receive allowances in clothing, which has also not been paid. It's outstanding for this. The association also lamented the lack of logistics at their offices to work effectively, coupled with poor working conditions over the past three years. And we are also working under very serious dehumanizing condition of service at the office. Logistics that are lacking in the office. We have the computers that are absent or broken down. We do not have toners, A4 sheets, uh, photocopiers. We, we have to work on our laptops. After that, you have to go to the commercial places to use some money to do the printing, the photocopying. And when you leave the office, you go with your laptop. The data is lost. We have been on the quiet because we do not want to speak to the public about it and do all that. And it has had a very serious economic implications on our pocket. And we have gotten to a breaking point. Our backs are breaking and we can no more bear. And this is why we have come out. The association says already several state attorneys have tendered in their resignation letters. Its president says if the situation is not properly managed, the consequences could be dire for the state. Matilda Pomaga, for Joy News, Accra. Uh, still to come, who would be in uh, Kaduasu in the eastern region where elevation is the most important requirement when it comes to making that phone call on your mobile phone. How high can you climb? Stay tuned. Former Chief Executive of the Voter River Authority, Dr. Charles Rokubobe, is impressing on governments the need for competitive bidding in the power generation sector. This, according to him, is the only way consumers can enjoy lower electricity tariffs. He was reacting to recent comments by former British diplomat Craig Murray that the introduction of independent power producers in Ghana's power sector is the cause of the current power crisis. In an interview with Joy Business editor Emmanuel Eje, Dr. Rekubrobe said the lack of transparency in the power purchase agreement is rather to blame. When VRA used to, to have the whole 
control of generation. What made it work? Because they were supported by international organizations uh, such as the World Bank, the issue of transparency was already built into how they operated. You know, all tenders were internationally advertised. Uh, people came in to put in their bids. The bids were evaluated. So one of the re things you do best with that is that that kind of transparency uh, already elicits the best cost. And I think that kind of thing missing in our current system is the biggest problem that we have to face. It's not a problem of, you don't throw the baby out to the bathroom and say that IPPs are bad. Because if IPPs are bad, what is the next best option? I remember that we went and took out the euro bond and spent a lot of money, a lot of that euro bond on, on building power plants. I, I'm not sure that, um, uh, that was the best use of, of, of funds. Now, the once popular or rather controversial TV license fee is making a major comeback with the chief collector, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, determined more than ever to ensure they make as many TV owners as possible pay. Effective August 1, which is just about three weeks away, all those who own TV sets will be required to pay 36 CDs a year and 60 CDs a year for those with two or more sets. A section of the public joy news has been speaking to, uh, however, not very excited about the news. Derek Akosan has more. TV license fees were quite popular in the early 90s when it was introduced as a means to resource the state broadcaster at a time when it was the only television channel available on the country's airwaves. It was common to hear of people being prosecuted for refusing or failing to pay their license fees. There were also stories about how far people would go to avoid paying what used to be the equivalent of 30 pesos now. But that was a long time ago, and GBC is asking for a whole lot more now. Domestic users who have just one TV set will pay 36 Ghana cities per annum. If you have two or more sets, you will pay 60 Ghana cities per annum. Dealers in TV sets are required to pay 5 Ghana cities per month, while commercial licenses users will pay 3 Ghana cities monthly. Collection was a major problem when it was first introduced, with many suggesting it probably cost GBC so much more to collect than what eventually came in. But the Director General, Major Retired Albert Donchebe, says the state broadcaster has figured out how to crack that problem this time round. Uh, thankfully, technology has made a number of advances. Uh, the most important one is the fact that, uh, as you know, Ghana is supposed to have gone digital by now. We haven't, but we will. Uh, sometime early next year. Now the digital platform is an interesting addition in the sense that it provides us with the opportunity to collect TV license fees via a decoder and we intend to do that. But that is not the only method that we're going to use. We are already in discussion finalizing agreement with a number of banks. Uh, we are looking at even the, the uh, money transfer on uh, on mobile, what you call mobile money. Members of the public are, however, not impressed and are kicking against it. This, this is a sensible nonsense because ah, already self, what we they watch for our TV top, apart from HIV, then they, they, they go sit down and say TV license. Who will go come collect that money, self? For me, I don't see any benefit in the TV license they are introducing. The reason is that. I don't really know the kind of programs they are showing now on TV. Like at first, you can see that they have a lot of educative programs and even which shows much of morals. But now you only see of kissing, romance. It would uh, be something where it would be useless because now self where you do inside them so. Where down, now to uh, where they can't take TV lances. What program quality they show for TV top way where for pay lances? Me, I will use my money to go buy TV. Then now we can't talk say I will pay TV lances. Why? Well, because they give the money where I go buy the TV. Major retired Don Chebe, however, says the new regime, which is an initiative with the blessing of the National Media Commission, ensures private broadcasters get a share of the revenue. That is the reason why in the current regime, the TV license fee is not a GBC, uh, it's a sole GBC beneficiary. GBC is going to share with broadcasting stations like yours, because we recognize that currently private stations undertake some public service broadcasting. 
That is the reason. That is the only reason why we are sharing with. Uh, the... Despite the protestations, members of the public do not have much of a choice as the license fee is backed by law. Persons who fail to comply could be fined heavily or jailed for a year. The Ministry of Communications, meanwhile, has finally nailed down this agreement with KNET, a Ghanaian owned entity contracted to migrate the country's broadcast networks onto a digital platform along with the rest of the world. Speaking at a signing ceremony in Accra, the minister said the project is structured to be executed in nine months, while a further three-month period has been set to address all theming problems that may arise as a result of the migration. Dr. Edward Omane Boama also added thousands of jobs will be created as a result. The over $80 million contract with KNET, according to the minister, will be funded with proceeds from the auction of the spectrum to be released following the migration. Dr. Omane Buama said all necessary approvals have been secured and that the project will eliminate the need for loans either concessionary or commercial to ensure certainty in the implementation process. He said the decision to settle on KNET, a Ghanaian-owned entity, is to promote Promote local capacity, adding, especially when they are offering to do it for $13 million less than the previous contractor. The contract being signed this afternoon for the DTT network solution is $13 million US dollars cheaper than the previous contract. The engagement of KNET Limited, a fully owned Ghanaian entity, amplifies government's resolve to develop local capacity. The payment for the contract sum of 82.3 million US dollars will be made from the proceeds of the auction of the spectrum to be released following migration of broadcasters from analog to digital, referred to as digital dividend. Emerging broadcasters will have the added benefits of a shorter turnaround time for investment returns and a substantially reduced annual operational cost. Broadcasters on a digital platform will be judged no longer on coverage, but on quality of content and branding. He said in government's bid to carry all stakeholders along, a comprehensive public education and awareness program will be carried out nationwide. The Ministry and the Digital Broadcasting Migration Committee have prepared comprehensive public education and awareness materials for the migration from analog to digital and we'll be distributing them to you. The campaign will be rolled out. We would like to call on all broadcasters to assist the Ministry and the National Communications Authority to sustain the public education and awareness campaign when it commences. This is to ensure that we educate and carry along all stakeholders during the migration process. We encourage all broadcasters to voluntarily campaign on the need for the transition from analog to digital and the benefits to be derived. The Digital Broadcasting Migration Committee has developed some basic Q&As aimed at answering some of the fundamental questions on the migration. Chief Executive Officer of KNET, Ken Ansan, assured his outfit's readiness to deliver within the stipulated time frame. The requirement of the contract is to provide an infrastructure for digital terrestrial television. And that is what we are going to deliver. Yeah. It is expected that free-to-air television signals will operate within a 12-month period, while the terrestrial network will be complemented with satellite services within the protocol framework to ensure that all areas are adequately served with digital TV signals. Upon completion of the network rollout, digital and analog transmissions will run concurrently for a period not exceeding one year. It is also expected that over 7,000 jobs will be created over the next two years in the STB sector. Ridwan Karim Dini Osman, Joy News, Accra. We're taking a break now, but up next we're bringing you business with Edson Amse. Do stay tuned. Thank you.
time to do business. My name is Eton Amsi. Trading today commenced on the Ghana Alternative Exchange in the shares of Meridian Marshalls Holding, the first educational institution to go onto the stock market in West Africa. Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Dr. Edu Inchi, at the listing ceremony congratulated the company and charged SMEs to take advantage of the opportunities available on the local boards via the Ghana Stock Exchange. Meridian Marshall's holding for that pre-university launched its IPO in April seeking to raise 2.5 million cities through the sale of 25 million shares at 10 pesos each. It however managed to raise 1.4 million Ghana cities after an extensive public offer. But at the listing today, the company put on offer 22 million shares on the alternate markets of the Ghana Stock Exchange. Speaking to Joy Business after the listing, President of Meridian Marshall's holding, Dr. Tetenete, promised investors some exciting returns. Well, the institutions that govern um, Meridian Marshall's holdings, they've uh, dotted the I's and crossed the T's. They would not uh, bring us to this level if um, they were not sure that we we're going to do the right things. Um, I know there are several educational institutions in the, in the space that we operate, but not all of them have uh, that many regulators as we have. We have the National Accreditation Board. We have Securities and Exchange Commission looking at us and regulating what we do. We have the Ghana Stock Exchange itself. And then car brokers, they are, at the moment, our major uh, shareholders. If you do the listing of 20 top uh, shareholders, car brokers tops. So they will not sit down for you to just run it the way you want to. That car brokers immediately after the listing bought 10,000 shares. Managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Kofi Yamwa, tells Joy Business the listing should encourage other educational institutions to come onto the market. Uh, that is AFB, very similar to Izwe. Uh, they have submitted the share prospectus. Uh, the share prospectus means that they have served intention that over a period of time they will come to the market to be raising debt instruments capital. Uh, so far, the share prospectus talks about 100 million target over a period of time. And they are currently doing three tranches of that shelf. Uh, total and 30 million Ghana cities. We expect them to also be listed in due course of time. If not this July, then early August. MMH listing becomes the second company after Samba Foods Limited to list on the Ghana Alternative Exchange, created to provide a platform for SMEs to access long-term capital at a relatively lower cost. In a related development, the Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission, Dr. Edu Ananienchi, has indicated that it is working to approve more listings on the alternate and main market of the Ghana Stock Exchange, revealing this to Joy Business. He says this is necessary. The, the, the host one, they, have, they, have, they, are working, they are working on their IPO now. The offer period is, is ongoing. So as soon as, you know, the good thing about this market is that once you launch the offer we know you have already succeeded because the minimum has been uh, underwritten you are only looking to get more than what has been underwritten so once the offer period ends the, the house will also be listed the others like i said on the 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 is way they issue the bonds they haven't finished issuing the bonds but so far they have issued four um two one has been uh, redeemed uh, so there's three still running on the on the stock exchange. They may come up to issue further bonds. But AFD, AFB has uh, gotten 100 million uh, shelf registration for bonds. What it means is that once we approve that, anytime they look at the market and they look at their needs and they want to issue, they will just uh, submit a pricing uh, statement that we are going to issue maybe 10 million at this rate, this is the tenor, and then the, we, 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 we just sign that on and they go and issue. But they haven't come. Um, the Ghana Home Loans is also trying to issue some bonds and they have filed an application for uh, approval that SEC is working on. 
Financial institutions which advertise products promising various incentives will soon be required by law to fulfill their promises. There's been all sorts of special offers and promotions from these financial institutions in their bid to attract more customers. And the draft bill which is before Parliament would allow the Bank of Ghana to closely monitor these special offers and promotions and sanctions, sanction those who renege. Head of other financial services at the central bank, Raymond Amanfo, explains how financial institutions that do not deliver on their promises could be sanctioned when the law is passed. Very soon we'll have laws that will compel institutions to deliver what they advertise. And if you advertise what you can't deliver, you will pay for deceiving the public. So we want to urge you to begin now, before you are caught by the law, when it becomes a prisoner. Mr. Amount for speaking to Joy Business at the launch of Union Savings and Loans Omni Savings Bonus, where customers are being promised up to 20% interest on their savings over a period of one year. Dominic Donko is head of business division at Union Savings and Loans. It's to address the culture of the limited culture of savings in Ghana, um, where there's a lot of spending and therefore there's also a lot of borrowing. We believe that small savings done consistently for a long period is rewarding. But we also acknowledge the limiting factors uh, which prevents people from, um, from saving regularly. Number one is convenience. Um, when you have smaller amounts to save, you don't want to incur additional transaction costs of taking transportation to a banking hall to deposit 20 Ghana cities, for example. And so this is why we are giving the boxes out to people in offices, workers, self-employed. They should just drop into these boxes all the amount that they have. That's it for business. My name is Eton Amsi. For more news, log on to myjawonline.com. That sounds like something from a witty advert, people climbing tall trees to just make and receive calls. In Akaduaso, in the East region, copywriters do not need to create this reality. People actually climb trees with their mobile phones just to place calls. Haruna Yusuf Unpune reports. In the Etiwa district of the eastern region lies the town of Akaduaso. 1,000 people live here and none of them have functional mobile phone networks. The young boys on this tree are not searching for fruits, but the ever-elusive network connection. All five mobile phone service providers have practically zero reception here. Even when precariously perched on a tree, voice clarity is nil. Residents are understandably worried about continuing to live in this communications black hole. In case of any emergency, we will be unable to call for help. All the existing networks don't work here. We need the government's intervention. We have to climb trees in order to make and receive calls. It is absurd. We need help. Chief of Akaduaso community, Berima Odeidria II, says he does not understand why a big town like Akaduaso doesn't have network connections. He hopes the Ministry of Communication will listen to the plight of his subjects and do something about the situation. <laughs> This big town doesn't have access to telecommunication network. We are cut off from the rest of the country. We are appealing to the appropriate authorities to come to our aid. All efforts made in getting in touch with the network providers to respond to the issue prove futile. Haruna Yusif Wumpuni's report from the Eastern Region. So MTN, Etel, Vodafone, Globe, Casapa, all of you, you know where to mount your cell sites now. We're bringing you sports next week.
Let's do some sports now. And Black Stars captain Asamoah Jan is set to make his move to Shanghai SPG. Of course, he cleared out his lockout lane, filled with tears as he said his final goodbye to the club on Tuesday evening. Now, the Ghana captain will be headed to China to Sunrise to undergo a medical before signing a contract with Chinese big spender Shanghai SIPG. Now, Jan, after a meeting with members of the club board, descended into the team's dressing room where he took his personal belongings from his customized locker. The highly emotional Black Stars captain had his eye filled with tears as he went up, you know, packing his stuff and getting ready to leave the club. And of course, there have been loads of reactions on Twitter as well. The fans are bidding goodbye. He's yet to actually sign, but at this point, it looks very much like Black Stars captain as someone Jan is going to be making his way to play some football in China alongside the likes of Demba Ba. And of course, we know that Didier Drogba and Anelka have also been there playing for Shanghai Xinhua. Let's do some athletics now. And manager of Youth Olympic gold medalist, Martha Bisa, we're talking about Miki Osebekon, has accused the Ghana Athletics Association of stifling the development of the athlete. Very little has been heard from the youngster after her heroics in Nigeria, China last year. Earlier, there were reports she had rejected a scholarship from the Ghana Athletics Association. Miki Bekon has lamented the lack of attention for the bidding star, and he spoke to Joy Sports. For somebody who had gone to that level of winning an Olympic gold medal to be left by on, on her own, you know, nobody is monitoring how she's doing in terms of training. Nobody is monitoring her welfare. You understand? And the difficulty in finding facility to train. These are very, diff very, very thick difficulty, and I, I, I don't think that we should underestimate some of these things. Very, very, very thick and intense difficulties. For me, what I'm doing is to sustain her, give her a mental attitude in terms of, uh, you know, prepping her up, you know, and of course, the eventual thing, the medium long term plan is to get her close to training facilities. Because I've always said that if Mata is allowed the training facilities as a peers outside this country, she can beat the world forever. So we need to do everything to either build the training facilities here or get her close to training facilities. She was promised the scholarship. I hope that it comes through because the scholarship has not come through so far. You know, and that was an anticipation to get her close to training facilities. So, if that doesn't come through, then it means that we need to find our own ways and means to get her close to training facilities. Because we don't have the training facilities here. Now, meanwhile, the Ghana Athletics Association has angrily reacted to the neglect claims by Martha's manager and are the youth Olympic gold medalist may not make the All-Africa Games as a result of her declining performances of late. Erasmus Kwa was a member of the Ghana Athletics Association, has been speaking to Joy Sports. You said back when he came to the meeting in May, this is what we need. He said he knew nothing about it, that we had asked or we had had prior communication. Okay, so you're saying that Martha has a scholarship. She already has a scholarship? Or a scholarship is in not... In, you know, a she's in the process of working on a scholarship. When a school offers a scholarship, so let's say we have Legon, we have Cape Coast University, we have all of them. They have scholarships for athletes. So a scholarship is, does not have a name written on it, but what they do is that they open it out to a group of athletes, whoever satisfied their criteria. Martha met the criteria, so those schools in the USA were interested in her. But since she and the criteria not, included, uh, included your performance. I mean, the academic the, performance. Academic performance. Okay, so how could she have met the criteria if she hadn't presented uh, her WASI results? Let's say Legon wants um, to give um, scholarships to athletes, and they pack a certain criteria. Let's say for let's say 100 meters, if you can run 10.53 then you meet the criteria. Well, we'll see how all of that goes. But with some news relief, she's not able to qualify for the All-Africa Games. Let's step into tennis now. A winner of last year's McDonald's Open Championship were unable to participate in the Davis Cup promised by headline sponsor after they were refused entry by the Spanish embassy. Male top seed George Darko and number one seed in the women's division, Francesca Nyako, were penciled to travel to wrap shoulders with the world's best. But the dream failed to materialize, even though all logistics were provided by the tournament sponsor, McDonald's Shipping. Filipina Sari is General Secretary of the Ghana Tennis Association and tells Joy Sports her outfit have alternative plans. Well, he's given us the go ahead to um, apply to the ITF Center of Excellence in Morocco for the top four to go there and camp for the Davis Cup. So the plan now is after the All African Games, which ends in September. 
they will players will come to Ghana and prepare and go to Morocco for the rest of September until October. Davis Cup is now on the 26th. It will start on the 26th of October. So they will go to Morocco and train there until maybe a day before they will fly to Egypt. That's your sport tonight. I'm George Adi Jr. July will join us with some more. You have a good night. It's been a year since Ghanaian hip life artist Castro disappeared after a jet ski accident at Adam. The musician in the company of some friends, including Black Stars captain and Samojan, went missing together with a female companion, Janet Bandu, when the accident occurred. Castro's disappearance created a year long mystery about whether he's dead or alive. While some, especially his dad, still hope he will one day resurface, there are others who believe it's time to let go so he could be giving a befitting send off. Gladys Uredu has more. It was some 12 months ago, hip life musician Theophilus Tego, popularly known as Castro, together with his friends, including Black Stars captain Asamwajan, went jet skiing at Adam. It all had the trappings of a perfect weekend trip. From the reports, Castro had gone onto the water in the company of Janet Bandu on an adventure that remains a mystery until today. The Marine Police then went on a search for the two, which focused mainly on the surface of the water with no attempt to dive under. Twelve months on, and there has been no sign of the pair. This perhaps gives so much hope to family, friends and loved ones that the hip life artist could come back soon. What else? Sound engineer JQ, who discovered Castro, recounts how he received the news of his disappearance. It was the same place I was sitting when the incident happened, and I had news from a friend who was in Ada. You know, and one year on. It still feels the same. We are people like us. We are still in that same mood. We are grieving. We are, you know, we are just devastated by this whole incident. JQ holds out hope that Castro is somewhere out there, alive and well. Uh, I have belief that um, we will see him again. But as for hiding, it's not what I want to put it. But I, I have the faith that you know. In again. Another industry player, sound engineer Hammer, however, believes people like JQ are living on false hopes. It's a no-brainer. I believe it's good. Uh, I think that it's, uh, it's very difficult for the family to come to that conclusion. I understand his loved ones are finding very difficult to accept that. But I don't think Castro is hiding anywhere, like people are saying. I don't think. Um, he is uh, he's intentionally eluding us. I think that it's a shame. The estuary is a death uh, area. It happens. Right, Castro the Destroyer, forever in our lives until he reappears. That's it for the bulletin. My name is Israel Lai. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good evening.